Stitches TV, I'm going to show you how to make a really simple sleeveless dress. I don't know if you've ever noticed before how much I love African print fabric, but today I'm using this amazing Dutch African print fabric. Now this dress is so simple that I'm challenging myself to make it in just one hour. You can probably use any sort of basic sleeveless pattern where it just has darts on the waist and bust darts. Right, so let's lay out all our pattern pieces. Great, ready to sew. You should have two back pieces and two back facings, one front piece, which was cut to a fold, and one front facing cut to a fold. Now the first thing that we're going to do is the thing that you probably fear most, which is putting in a blind zip. Before we start putting in the zip, we're going to overlock all the way down one of these edges and then do the same to the other side as well. So I'm at the centre back. Now you may as well go around the edge of the flap of your split at the back as well. Always leave a long thread when you overlock because it's a nightmare when the overlocker becomes unthreaded. And then what I want you to do is I want you to put your back dress pieces right sides together and I basically want you to line everything up and press back that seam allowance just so we've got a line as a guide to where we're going to put our zip on. We get our blind zip and then on the back side of it, on the wrong side of it, we sort of roll it back and really press back those edges so we can get as close as possible to the teeth when we sew. Now to sew a blind zip, you need one of these blind zip feet. And on my machine, I just lift up the lever drops down and then I put my blind zip foot in position like that. You also need to pass the thread through the little hole on the foot so all the threads are underneath. And look what happens, okay, because this little groove thing, it pushes the zip teeth out of the way. As you sew, you should find that you are just in the safest part, but close enough to those teeth. So you just keep going all the way down as far as you can, and then just stop where it's safe. So it ends up being something like that. So once again, my starting position for doing the other side, so look, that's the one that we've just done. So my starting position for doing the other side, side is having the zip the right way round, my fabric's the right way round, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip everything over because the way that I sew on the zip is with right sides together like that, lining up the zip teeth with my pressed edge and lining it up with the top of the dress. I'm going to stitch very carefully, go backwards, forwards and stitch down that seam that we pressed before and I'm going to keep going until I get to the split at the back. Now when you get to the step of the uh, facing of the split, you need to come down, I would say, 
about a good inch and go backwards and forwards a few times there. So then you should end up with something like that. Now, before we do anything else, what I want us to do is, I want us to deal with this split at the bottom. Now, you need to stitch straight across here or an angle. I think I'm just gonna go straight across just to hold back the facings on your split. So I'm starting at the edge of one of the facings. I'm on the right side of the fabric. I'm going backwards and forwards to begin with, and I'm gonna go right across, straight, right across, and stop about the same place on the other side and go backwards and forwards, and that will be enough to hold back the facings. Right, now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna stitch up those back darts. Now it's really easy, I, I get the dot at the bottom and the dot at the top, and then I'm gonna go backwards and forwards at the beginning, straight stitch right through all my chalk lines and go off into nothing on the last dot. So you then end up with darts on both sides, like this. Now I made my darts a little bit shorter because they were a bit long for me. And then I pressed them going towards the side. You might find this strange, but now we're gonna stitch on our facings, right sides together with our back piece of our dress. I'm gonna start on one side. So you line everything up. And first of all, you're gonna stitch around this neck seam. And you're just gonna keep, you're gonna push the teeth of the zip towards the dress. And you're just gonna keep sewing all the way to the edge. So that's all along the top of the neck. So I'm not going across the shoulder. That's very, very important. I'm not going across the shoulder. So I'm using a slightly smaller seam allowance than they said. So I'm using just half a centimetre seam allowance for going around the neck. Now when I get to that zip bit, I'm pushing the teeth away from me, sort of rolling the zip thing away from me and just sewing directly over it and going backwards and forwards. Now you will need to do little snips like this little V snips into that curve because otherwise there's no way that it's going to sit properly. Now what you've got to do is you've got to do the same thing but you're going to stitch all around the armhole. So do not stitch across the shoulder. Do a very small, well I'm doing a very small seam out so you might want it to be bigger. Keeping everything flat, matching up those notches and going right to the edge and then again if you've got any curves here then you're going to need to snip into those do little V's and then do exactly the same on the other side and then give it a good old press so you should end up with something like this now we're not going to stitch down any of these bits yet we're going to do exactly the same as we did with these facings on the back we're going to do the same with the facing on the front. So I want you to stitch around the neck of the front first with the fabric right sides together and around the armholes, but do not stitch up the shoulder seams. That's really important. Here's a brilliant tip for how to finish off your shoulder really, really neatly like that. And this is it, this is what you do, okay? So this is my back and this is my front. I'm gonna put my back so it lines up with my front perfectly, but then I'm gonna go inside on the facing and I'm gonna turn it inside out. So I'm actually inside now. And then I'm gonna open everything out in there so that it perfectly fills the space. So I'm on the shoulder seam, completely filling the space. 
And then when I'm happy with how much it's filling the space, then I very carefully hold it together and sew straight across. And then when you turn it the right way round, hopefully it will look like that. Now that really is like magic, isn't it? Now what I want you to do is, I want you to overlock all of the edges of your back facings and your front facings. And then when you've done that, you can then start stitching up your side seams. Now when we do the side seams, we're gonna run it from the facing, going all the way down the side seams using a straight stitch going all the way down. I've got five minutes until I pick up the kids. I've stitched up the side seams, I've overlocked them, or you could use zigzag. What else have I done? I've pressed them so the seams go towards the back. And now we just need to do the hem. I want you to overlock the hem, so overlock all around the hem, press it up an inch or however long you want it to be, and then just stitch a straight stitch around, and then it'll be time to try it on. But I'll do that after I've picked up the kids. Okay, I've got it on, but I'm not gonna show it to you yet because I want to show you something about when you finish off the hem. Look, when you finish off the hem, look how I've got the facing to the split coming over the hem. So all of that hem gets pressed back and then that goes over the top. So there we go, look at that. So I've done all my darts. I've got my darts on the waist, got my darts at the back, a blind zip, I forgot to say that when you finish off that facing, where the facing meets the, the blind set, just tack it by hand, just press it back and tack it by hand. Now I'm not very good at wearing sleeveless things, so I've put my vintage blouse underneath it. I think it works quite well as a kind of tank top dress. So this is it, just as it is sleeveless. I think I might prefer it with a v-neck at the back. Now, if you decide to make your fitted dress, share it with me on my Facebook page, Stitchless TV Sewing Channel. Thanks a lot for watching. See you again soon. Bye.